start recording. Okay, recording is done. I started. Okay, okay, let's start. Uh, it's my big pleasure to introduce Jean Louis Caletelin from Paris, who will speak all about zero cycles on Del Pezzo surfaces, variation upon the theme of Daniel Carre. And uh, Jean Louis, you. No, the, the, no, you small. Small. I did something wrong with the screen, now it's extremely small. Uh, yeah, now probably I need to zoom, zoom well, in. What I'm trying to do. <laughs> oh, gosh, oh, what, what happened? I don't no, 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 maybe, no. Maybe on the right, a little bit to the right, you see that there's a magnifying glass. Maybe it is. This is it? No? No, no, that's, that's, that's no, 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 no. That's, this is the first time I went. What is this? Oh, it's better. You, you. Oh, wait, 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 I get, I get it back. Okay, 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 okay. okay now it's fine? Uh, yeah. It's, it's the right size? Good. Uh, okay. uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah? I mean, yeah, you have the full screen now? Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, thank you for the invitation. Uh, so this is a text which I wrote uh, while we were locked down. I thought when you do something while, when I was locked down, and I always wanted to pay uh, my tribute to Daniel Corey, and so this is my way of paying my tribute to Daniel Corey writing this paper. So the text is in French, as it's uh, since we talked in French with Daniel Corey. Uh, you can find it at archive, and there's a version which is uh, accepted for publication, for which I was asked to develop the introduction, and that just I put that on my web page yesterday. Right. So introduction and statement of main results. So let's start slowly. We have an algebraic variety of a field k. X of k denotes a set of rational points. If you have a closed point, remember k is not algebraic closed in this talk most of the time. If p is a closed point, we let k of p be the residue field at the point p. This is a fine extension of k. And the degree of this extension, denoted k of p over k, is called the degree of p. Uh, a closed point of degree one is exactly a rational point. The index of a variety of a k is the GCD of the degrees of all the closed points. It's also the GCD of the degrees of fine field extensions over which the variety acquires a rational point. Of course, if there's a rational point, then the index is one. And as usual, when mathematicians, when they have an implication, they ask, what about the converse? So what about the converse? And there's one classical case, is the case of quarics. So this question which was raised by Witt in 1937, in fact, answered by Emil Artin, but it was not recorded, and Springer published it in 1952. So if you have a quarric, which has a rational point of our field extension of odd degree, it has a rational point. There's one less classical case, which is the intersection of two quarics, and several people prove this in various uh, fashions. Okay, now this is with close points. Now zero cycles. Zero cycle on a K variety is a finite linear combination with integral coefficients, positive or negative, of closed points. And the cycle is called effective if all the NPs are, are at least zero. The degree of the zero cycle is simply the sum for all the NPs of these integers, the degrees of the P, the closed points of a K. On this group of zero, it's a free abelian group. On this, uh, this group, you, there's a rational equivalence which is defined. Each time you see a proper morphism from some curve to x, and the curve is normal and integral, and you see a rational function, non-zero rational function on c, you take its divisor and you push it down to, 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 to x. Now on c, because it's a curve, you have a zero cycle, so you push down, you get a zero cycle. Okay? And you decide that these things are, are rational equal to zero. You take all possible c's, p's, and, and functions. If the variety is proper, because the degree of, uh, uh, of a rational function on the proper, uh, proper curve is, is zero. Uh, there's an induced map from uh, the group of zero cycles, modular rational equivalence to Z, given by the degree. Okay, the image is exactly, uh, is the index, defined by the index, generated by the index. And the kernel is called a reduced char group of zero cycles and sometimes denoted A0 of X. Now, uh, on a curve, what, are, what is sufficient for curves? So if you look at curves and you look at this notion, uh, on a curve you have Riemann's inequality that tells you that the, the dimension of the linear system attached to Z is at least equal to the degree of Z plus one minus G. 
Now, this implies various things. First of all, any zero cycle of degree at least G on C is rationally equivalent to an effective cycle. And this is of interest, uh, even over the complex field. Okay. Now, statements which are interest only on the non algebraic closed field. If G is bigger than one, if the index is one, then there exist effective zero cycles of degree G and degree, degree G plus one, so that you can find close points of co-prime degree, which are both smaller, or at most equal to G plus one. If G is at least one, and there's a rational point, then the charge group of zero cycle is joined by close points of degree at most G. Yeah, of course, a very close field is obvious. And for G equals zero and G equals one, if the index is one, then in fact, there's a rational point that all follows from Riemann's inequality. Okay, so these are very nice properties for curves. And so there are naive questions. Suppose you take a smooth projective very connected variety of arbitrary dimension, do we have similar results with some integer replacing G? If you're with a complex field, only the first property is relevant. The question was a zero cycle of degree, at least something are rational equivalent to effective zero cycles. And it's well known that the answer is no. This is a famous result of Mumford in 1969 on the problem of Severi. And the answer, the answer was expanded by Reutemann in 1971 and another brilliant proof by Spencer Block in 1979, which was much expanded later. Okay. So the theorem is, suppose you have a smooth projective variety of a complex field. If there exists an integer n, at least one, such that any zero cycle of degree at least n is rational equivalent to an effective zero cycle, then in fact this forces all this h zero of x omega i to be zero. So for i at least two. So all the h by, by, um, by duality, all the h i x o x for i at least two will be zero. So that definitely restricts the possibility for the geometry of x. So here is the paper by Reutemann, where you can read the theorem exactly here. Uh, Mumford only wrote it for surfaces. Okay, so, so, so if we are interested in the algebraic closed field, we have to restrict our naive questions. And we only consider smooth projective varieties of a K such that over arbitrary algebraic closed field, so in fact, what we have in mind is huge algebraic closed field extension, the geometry of the variety of the, uh, over the big algebraic closed field is reasonable. And so what, what we mean by reasonable in this talk here, in decreasing order of generality, first one is the variety is Y, is C0 representable, that is there exists a proper curve C and a proper morphism from C to Y, such that all the zero cycles of Y are covered by the zero cycle coming from this unique curve C. Second property, we care, C0 trivial you'd ask the degree, degree, the degree map to be an isomorphism. That is all the zero cycle, any two rational points are rational equivalent. Then weaker, you have the class of rationally connected varieties as defined by Kolar, Miyoka, and Mori, for instance, final varieties. And then weaker, you have unirational varieties. Everybody knows what unirational varieties are. And in the case of surfaces, these two classes coincide. They are just a class of rational surfaces. Okay, one special class of varieties of which are geometry irrational are smooth compactifications of a homogeneous space of a connected in algebraic group. Okay, that's very special, but uh, a big group of people who are particularly interested in such varieties. And for such varieties, the question whether the index is one implies whether the rational point has been much investigated. And if E is a principal in the space, in fact, the question is open. There are positive results due to Sarah, Sansuk over number fields, and Bayer Lenstra, but the Joel case is still open. But for projective, yes, yes. Is on the previous slide. I'm sorry? On the previous slide, uh, is this supposed to be increasing in order of generality? No, no, here. Wait, which no, one is, which one is, I mean, so this four is, is the most general. So yeah. This is very, this is very, this, this is very special. This is more gel, this is more gel, this is more gel. Oh, no, sorry, question? you're right. Okay, sorry, never mind. Okay. okay. Okay, and this is even more special. <laughs> okay. So uh, for projective homogeneous spaces, we have Springer's theorems on quadrics. That is, if the index is one, there's a rational point. But for in general, for homogeneous spaces, and even for projective homogeneous spaces, 
There are examples where the index is one, but there's no rational point. All right, so what I want to do in this talk is to concentrate on a very special class, the class of uh, surfaces that are a field K, which geometrically are rational. So geometrically, they're, they're birational to P2. But as many people know, this is their form from being birational to P2 over the ground field. And so what we shall see in this talk is that the analogs of the, the property for curves hold for all such surfaces. So the first theorem, there are two CRM, main CRMs. The first CRM is a substitute for the would-be statement if the index is one at a rational point. So that CRM generalizes the result for cubic surfaces, which Cora obtained in his thesis, which I, we will discuss in detail later. Which is, so the, the general CRM is this, CRM A. Take X over K be a smooth projective geometrically rational surface. Then there is an integer N, which depends only on the geometry of X, so that if the index is one, then there exist, close, there exist close points of co-prime degrees, and all these degrees being smaller than n, n of x. Okay. So in the case of Corea, and to make things simple, in the case of Corea, we'll see it. If you take a cubic surface, if the index is one, then there exists a uh, close point of degree uh, at most uh, uh, 10, and then of course of degree three. Okay, so n of x is 10 in that case. Okay, so that is the first theorem. And the second theorem generalizes a result which Corey and I uh, proved in 1979 for conic bundle of a projective line. The theorem says that x be a smooth projective to a rational surface with a, with a rational point. That's a minor restriction. There exists an integer m of x, which depends only on the geometry of x, so that any zero cycle on x of degree at least m of x is rationally equivalent to an effective cycle which implies easily that the charger of zero cycles would be generated by close points of degree at most m of x. So that's the analog which we saw for curves of arbitrary genus. Right, so that's, uh, that was the uh, first part. Now, uh, in the second part, I'm going to discuss choresis, which is the question of index one for depths of degree three. As I said, Daniel Corey uh, passed away in 2015. Uh, in his thesis, he had studied the question down to a term if a cubic hypersurface in P and K in any dimension has a rational point in a finite field extension of degree prime to three, does it have a rational point in K? That is, if the index is one, do we have X, X of K not empty? So this is the analog for cubic hypersurfaces of, of the statement for quarry hypersurfaces. So this is Corey's first page of Corey's thesis. Question had been raised by Segre, Benjamin Segre, by Cassos and Sundar. So the thesis, in fact, there are two parts in the thesis, and let me devote one slide to the first main theorem in the, in the thesis. Uh, it's, a, it's an interesting theorem. It says, if you take the field of fraction of a complete DVR with real field kappa, if this property that the index is one implies X of K not empty holds for cubic hypersurface of the residual field in arbitrary dimension, and it holds for the cubic half over k in any dimension. So it's going uh, one step more uh, for a complete DVR, provided you know the result for all cubic half surfaces of any dimension. And this is used by, of course, as you can imagine, you have to dis discuss the bad reduction, possible bad reduction, it's quite delicate. So a corollary is that if you take a periodic field, then the property holds. And the reason is that for a finite field, it's very easy to prove the property. Okay, that's all I wanted to say on this first part, but my impression is that there are still something to dig there and people should work on, uh, on his proof. I mean, the proof is correct, but uh, there's, there's something more to, to, to get from there. Okay, the talk is concerned with second main theorem in thesis, his method and some improvements which lead to theorem A and B. So here in our case, an arbitrary field. And so his theorem is you take a smooth cubic surface. If it has a rational point and the fine field extension of K degree prime to three, then it has either a rational point or it has a point in action of degree four or in action of degree 10. Okay, so ideally we'd like to have one, but all we know is one, four or 10. So I'm going to describe the main points of Corey's proof. Uh, it is very classical. It uses curves of load genus lying on the surface. It uses a Raman row for line bundles on the surface and a formula for the arithmetic genus of a curve on the surface. 
when the point is that when there's no weather that occurs, which when produced by this technique are smooth or even irreducible. Okay? And so one has to envision the possible degeneracy cases. And so this, in the third part of the talk, I will explain how I found a method that enables one to dodge this part of the argument and then produce more results or other. <laughs> okay, so now let's assume KRC of case zero. Um, and I will not answer a question about what happens in KRC P or when the field is not perfect. Right? So we assume that smooth cubic surface at a close point of degree prime to three. And we take D to be the least such integer. If D is one, we have our rational point, we're happy. If D is two, uh, it's well known how to get a rational point. You take the point, it's conjugate the lines through two points and it, it hits the, either it's contained in the cubic surface or it hits the cubic surface in a, in a rational point. Okay? So now we assume that D is prime to three until it's equal to four. And we take a close point of degree D prime to three minimal. Okay, we can also pick a close point of degree three by intersection with a line. So we have at our disposal this point of degree D prime to three and this point of degree three. And so what one does is that one take the smallest integer such that there exists a surface of degree N cutting out a curve gamma on X which contains both P and Q. Okay, so it contains this point of degree prime to three and it contains this point of degree three. So what one computes easily using Romanor is that, uh, well, that, that uh, this linear system of hypersurfaces of degree n has dimension at least 3n n plus 1 over 2 plus 1. And so uh, we're going to assume that the curve we find uh, is geometrically reducible and smooth. I'll explain later how we can ensure that we can do as if. Okay, on this curve, there's a zero cycle of degree 1 because we have this point of degree 3 prime to 3 and this point q of degree 3. Now you compute the genus of the curve and you find 3n n minus 1 over 2 plus 1, which as you may immediately observe is smaller than this here. Okay. So if on the one hand uh, this inequality holds, that is uh, this inequality holds, then one may find a curve of degree n cutting out a curve gamma, which we assume to be smooth, passing through the close point p of degree d and q of degree 3. Okay, so this is why I had the d plus 3 here. If on the other hand, D is at least equal to this quantity, then D minus three is bigger than the genus of gamma. And so on the smooth curve gamma, you have the zero cycle of degree D minus three, and by Riemann, -Roll, by Riemann in fact, it is rationally equivalent to an effective zero cycle of degree D minus three, strictly bigger than D. So now we produce a close point of degree prime to three and smaller than D, and that's a contradiction, okay? So that's okay if we have these two inequalities. So that works for any integer d, which is prime to three, and which lies in an interval like this. So you take a list n, which satisfies this inequality, and you check whether this inequality is fulfilled. Now, there are a few values where it doesn't work. There are a few possibilities for d where this doesn't work, and in fact, three of them, if I remember well. And for these other values, you need a complementary argument. So in particular, the nastiest case is when d is of the shape 3n n minus 1 over 2 plus 1. And then what, when, what Cora does is that it takes a curve, which is the normalization of the curve gamma 0 on x, which cuts out a surface of degree n, I mean, uh, in, uh, so in P3, passing through P, and passing not only through Q, but passing through Q with, as a double point. So what happens is that the genus of the curve, the geometric genus, drops on by three because of this condition. And the dimension of the linear system of interest drops on by nine because you've imposed three, uh, geometrically, three points of degree three. Okay. But still, if D is, at, is, is like this, uh, this bad case, with n at least four, there's enough room. So the only cases where there's not enough room is when n is equal to two, which is D equals four, and n equals three, which is D equals 10. And this is how you, you end up proving that on a smooth cubic surface with a close point of degrees d prime to three, the least such d can be chosen to be either one or four or 10. Okay. And so the 40 year, five years old question is, can we eliminate 10, four or both? And that we don't know. Okay, so that's uh, Corey's argument, except that I skipped uh, how he managed to handle the case where the curve which you find, sometimes the linear system you find, the dimension is just one. Okay. So you find one curve 
and there is no way a priori you can ensure it that it be smooth and irreducible. So you have to discuss what happens if it breaks up into pieces, and this is not, this is a this is not very exciting. Okay. So it assumes that the curve is linear, is irreducible and smooth, and so Corey discusses these cases. Okay, and these cases may occur. I mean, for instance, if you if you look for a plane conic passing through a closed point of degree three in P two K, if the closed point happens to lie on the line, uh, then uh, you won't find a smooth conic. You'll find two lines. Okay. All right. So this is for now. I reached the third part of my talk, where I want to explain how to make the method flexible. So I, I cannot see me. I, I'm facing the screen, or yes. Can you see me on the side of the screen, or you don't see me, or you just see my screen? Hello. Hello, I see you. I see you. We see your screen. Yeah. I see you. <laughs> okay, so we want to make the method flexible. Okay, so to avoid this discussion of degenerate cases. So here are the ideas. When available for the type of surface one when looks at, one would like that if there's a k rational point in the variety, there are lots of rational points. So typically for cubic surfaces, we know that, but for depth surface of degree one, we don't know it. Okay, second idea, use the Bertini theorems how much as you can. This is not very original. Now the idea which is a bit more original is uh, comes, you replace K by a large field. You replace K by K double parenthesis T, a variable T, the formal power series field in one variable of a K. And when you have a large field, the large field have this uh, very beautiful property that if you take a smooth variety with a rational point of a large field, well, the, the rational points are the risky dense. And you can move them around. Okay. And the other point is that for each of the problems which we consider here, the magic is that to prove a result, a given result, A or B for variety X, it's enough to prove it, uh, to solve it positively for the variety X cross K, K double parenthesis T. So you replace K by this large field and you argue with the large field. Okay, so let me discuss the Bertini first. So a variation of the Bertini theorems, which you can find in Giannullo's book. Take a smooth projective to reconnected variety, take a K morphism, assume the image has dimension at least two, and then it generates P and K. And take an integer R, which is smaller than at most equal to N. Then there exists a non-empty set in the product of x by itself r times, so that if you take any field L containing k and any L point in, in U, then you can produce a hyperplane over a field L whose inverse image, whose trace on x if you want, is a smooth generic integral L variety which contains the points P1, PR. Okay. So that sounds very good, except that what I'm saying is that if there is a point in you, in L point in U, then we, we, we can get that. But I pray there's no guarantee there's an L point and we just, we're, we're dealing with non aspect closed fields. Right? So that's what we can do over an arbitrary field. You can do this statement. And if you have an L point, then you're in business. You can produce a smooth general integral hyperplane section or rather inverse image of a hyperplane in P and K. Okay. Now, in fact, what we'll need, because we're discussing um, zero cycles, we need a result not only for rational points, but we need a, a result for close, for close points. So we want a version of Bertini for close points. So we take a variety, and we consider the open set of Xn consisting of m tuples, where the Xi are different from Xg. Okay, and then you have a symmetric group uh, X and W, the quotient is a smooth variety, denoted semen separable x, and it parameterizes effective zero cycle degree m, which are separable. That is, all, all the geometrically, all the components are distinct. Okay, and so there's a zero scale version of, of Bertini, which looks reads like this. You take your smooth variety, you have the morphism, the image has dimensioned at least two, generates p and k, and now you pick up natural, instead of taking rational point, one, 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 you take natural integers, so that the sum is at most equal to n. And then the statement is that you can produce a, a non-empty open set of this product, CMS1 sub x cross CMS t sub x, so that for any field L containing k and any L point of u, corresponding to a family ZI of separable effective cycles of degree 
phi. There exists a hyperplane in PNL whose inverse image in Excel is a smooth geometrical L variety which contains the points of the support of the cycle sub zi. Okay. So we had it for rational points, now we have it for closed points. And same, same comment as before, U of L could be empty. And to answer a question which, uh, which was raised during a previous talk, uh, for the proof of the theorems which follow, uh, A and B, we actually need this and not simply uh, taking the global sim, sim S sepex, a technical point. Okay, now um, another point. Take a field, characteristic zero, a smooth projective variety. In the talk, we'll say that a variety has a density property, if it satisfies if you take a field extension of the width of the as an L point, then the set of L points is Zariski dense in Excel. For instance, conics satisfy the density property because a conic, as soon as it has a rational point, it is P1 and therefore the points are rational points as Zariski dense. But it need not have a rational point of the ground field. Okay. Now, uh, second notion, there's a notion of icons and the set of rational points of variety it is generated by the elementary relations. If you take two rational points, uh, they lie, you demand that they lie in the image of a morphism from P1K to X, of the rational points from P1K to X. Okay? And you take the relation which is generated by this. So you have chains of morphism from P1 to X and one when going to a, B, point uh, A, B, 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 C, and so on. Okay? And in this talk, we say that X has the R density property, if it satisfies that for any field extension and P in X of L, the set of points of X of L which are icon to P on XL are Zariski dense on XL. Now, uh, smooth cubic hypersurfaces in P and K satisfy both properties. Okay. Now, there's a betting theorem for varieties with density properties, which reads essentially just like the ones we had before, uh, with a small variation. Okay, so we have the same hypothesis with the closed points. And then if X satisfies the density property, um, so you're given the closed points, P1, PT of X. Now, if X satisfies the density property, then there's a hyperplane such that the inverse image is, is smooth, shaped integral, and contains effective zero cycles, then one ZT of this decrease S1, ST. Okay, I'm not saying that it contains P1, PT, but I'm saying that it contains zero cycles of exactly effective zero cycles of exactly the degrees of P1 PT. And the second statement is that if X satisfies the R density property, then you, one can do better. We can ensure that the zero cycle ZI here, uh, each zero cycle ZI is rationally equivalent to the zero cycle PI, defined by PI. Right, so now let me go to the notion of large field. A uh, field is called large, uh, core fertile. If, uh, if you take uh, any smooth connected variety X over F, uh, I should say, uh, let's say geometric connected, if there's a rational point, then the set of rational points is Zariski dense in X. Okay, that's a large field. Uh, the fact is that if a field is large and any finite field extension of F is large. Uh, so any smooth geometric, uh, geometric connected variety of a large field satisfies the density property. That's clear from the, from the definition. And then the basic fact is that the formal power series field over a large field, or over any field, is a large field. Okay. Other examples of large fields include, for instance, the PID fields or the field of fraction of a complete of a Ancelian discrete version ring. Okay, now there's Bertin of a large field. So we start again, and we take a smooth projective variety over a large field, take a, an F morphism, assume the image of dimension, correct dimension, generates P and F, take close points of X of received degrees S1, ST, with such that the sub of the degrees at most N. Then there exists a hyperplane H over F, such that the inverse image is smooth, geometric integral, and contains the effective zero cycle of respective degrees S1, ST. Okay. So now I'm not saying, it's a fact, okay, we have one. And then if X is generally rationally connected, then one can moreover ensure that for each I, the zero cycle ZI is a rational equivalent to the zero cycle PI we were given. Okay. So for the proof of A, well, the proof of A is, well, it's simple. 
the family P1 PT defines an F point of the smooth connected, uh, generally connected uh, K variety, since F is large, and in an empty Zariski open set of that variety contains an F point. And for the proof of B, one uses a result of color, which is proven by deformation method. If you take any F point on a smooth projective, the regular rationally connected variety of a large field, the set of F points which are R equivalent to P, and in particular are rational equivalent to P, is Zariski dense in X. Okay, so we have this, ultimately we have this basic theorem, theorem which we're going to use. So over large field, we, we, can, we can get hyperbolic sections as we want, where we can move around the P1s, PTs, which we were given and get a smooth hyperbolic section. Right, so now let me finish this part, uh, this, uh, this, uh, sec this part on flexibility. Uh, I told you that uh, the properties we're interested in, if we can prove them for K of T, we can get them from K. Well, here's the detail. Take a field K and take F K double minus T and let take X to be any proper K variety. Then the GCD of the degrees of closed points coincide for X over K and for XF over F. I mean, the whole point is that if you have a closed point on your XF, you expand it over k double bracket t, and then you specialize to the special fiber, which is just x over k. Okay. For an integer b, for an integer r, the smallest degree of a closed point of degree prime to r, which is also the smallest degree of an effective zero cycle of degree prime to r, coincides for x over k and for x f over f. Uh, c, uh, let i be a set of natural integers. If the char group of zero cycle and XF may be generated by classes of FT cycle degree at most D in I, then the same holds for X. And D, uh, let D be an integer. If a very zero cycle and XF of degree at least D is rational according to an effective cycle, then the same holds for X. Okay. So to prove all these statements, which we want, which we want in theorem A and B, we can assume that the field is large. That's the conclusion. And then we have these Bertini theorems at our disposal. Right, so this is uh, the end of the third section, except that I'm just saying uh, we can run Corazal proof using smooth projective curves in the inner system of interest. And so there are two ways to do it. You can use density property of smooth cubic surfaces and apply Bertini theorem for varieties with this property, or you can directly reduce to the case of large fields. And then we don't bother about rational points being zero risky dense. There are zero risky dense of a large field as soon as you have one. Okay, so that um, that's the way that's all for Cray's argument. So an important point is that uh, one is able, now able to move the zero cycles and get smooth curves. Okay, so using this, ah, I'm doing something wrong again. Uh, what did I do? Sorry. This you is, have to zoom again. Uh, uh, I know I have to zoom. <laughs> I have to zoom. That's for clear. But, but let's see. Where it says 100. Wait, wait. It says 100. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, right. Thank you. Right. So, so now let's go for without much detail with the next result. What about, so we had uh, index, uh, the question of index one for cubic surfaces. What about that, which are depths of degree three? Now, what about depths of degree two? Well, using Bertini of a large field, uh, it's enough to prove, uh, this is in a way prove, if you take depths of surface of degree two, which is a double color of P2K, or if I know smooth quartic, if you have a close point of odd degree on X, of course you have a point of degree two, if you have a point of odd degree on X, then there exists a close point of degree either one or three or seven. And in the proof, just as for cubic surfaces, in certain cases, so we look at now uh, the only linear system which you have at your disposal, which are the inverse images of the curves of degree n in P2. Okay? And so in some cases, uh, the D and the N in a bad position, so you don't get uh, what you want directly. You have to restrict if you have to look for curves with some singularities, but one manages. And using the Bertini of these results, and knowing that certain inevitable shifts are very ample, uh, one get the result. Now, in this case, depth of degree two is a k rational point. 
unless you're in a very special situation, KUNRHN is known and people, various people, and including Van Loyk have studied this problem. But the trick with Lars Fee enables us to handle the problem without using KUNRHNality. Now, for depth of degree two, there's something uh, quite exciting is that in fact, one cannot prove there's a rational point. In fact, Kohler and Mela in 2017, they showed that there exists examples of surface of degree two with a closed point of degree three, uh, therefore index one, but with no rational point. That's quite amusing. So here is their example. You take a field which has, admits a quadratic field extension, Kerbrute, which admits a cubic field extension or admits a quintic field extension. You take a conic with a smooth k point, and you take a smooth quartic in the plane, intersecting so intersecting the conic in uh, eight points, which break up as a point of degree three and a point of degree five, a close point. Okay, and then you take k of parentheses. You add one variable, and you take you could add you could look at the look at the formal power series field over t that would be the same, and look at the smooth depth surface of degree two defined by this equation z square double cover of this quartic, A C U V W square plus T Q Q U V W okay, equals zero. So you have obvious points of degree three and five, but if you look at Congress's module T, you'll find that there's no F point. Okay. So in this case, you cannot reduce to uh, index one, to, to rational points. Okay, now as for depths of degree one, you don't ask the question because uh, as everybody knows, any depths of degree one has a rational point, namely the fixed point of the anti-canonical anti system. So there's no question of whether i of x is one implies x of k not empty. But the question is whether rational points has already skipped once, but that's another question. Okay, so now I switch to another topic. This will be the fourth part. Uh, yeah, the fourth part. Um, I discuss effectivity. So, effective result for zero cycles. So, using one of these Bertini theorems, one goes back to cubic surfaces, and now I'm going to restrict to this is discussing theorem B. Okay, special cases of theorem B. Uh, suppose there's a rational point. Then, every zero cycle of degree on, on X is rationally equivalent to the difference of two effective zero cycles of degree three. Okay, the first statement. And the second statement is that every zero cycle on X of degree at least 10 is rational equivalent to an effective zero cycle. Okay. So what you do is you, you try to do combinations of your cycles uh, with some rational point and you let the curves pass through these. And because it's Bertini's, in the end, you manage to reduce to smooth curves or at worst, smooth uh, curves with just uh, one triple point, one, one, one um, double point and you manage to prove this result. And the same principle as the principle Cora used to discuss the index. Okay. And so in special cases, when D is, uh, is, is of this shape or that shape, uh, then you, you have to use curves with one. In fact, in that case, even two double rational points for the proof. But still, and guess this. And A0 cell of the at least 10 is rational to an effective zero cycle. Okay. For depth of degree two, with a rational point, what one proves is that there is any zero cycle of degree zero is rational equivalent to the difference of two effective zero cycle of degree six, and every zero cycle of degree at least 43 is rational equivalent to an effective cycle. And again, there are two special cases for the degree where you have to use curves with one respectively two double rational points. Okay, so here, because we know the R density property for surface of degree two, uh, Okay, I mean, we, we use one of these Bertini theorems. Let's not go into details, it's the same principle. Now let's go to depth of degree one. Okay, as I said, it has a K point, but what about effectivity? Well, every zero cycle of degree zero is rational equivalent to the difference of, of effective zero cycle of degree 21. And the best I could do is that every zero cycle of degree at least 904, uh, nine, I'm sorry, this is not the US, 904 is rational equivalent to an effective cycle. Okay, the discussion of close points of degree D again requires the curves, curves with one respectively two double rational points. And again, when uh, this, uh, you have to pick up the, the suitable Bertini, but the Bertini with the large fields uh, with Collar's result on R density is used in that case. Okay, 
So with some effort, one should be able to give another theorems without assuming that there's a rational point. So here's one example. I've, I did the computation quickly, so I haven't checked all the details. So you take a depth surface of degree four. And you assume the index is two. Then uh, Kreutz and Virai, uh, the number fields, I've recently discussed whether this implies the existence of a close point of degree two. Okay, that's an interesting problem. And so over an arbitrary field of characteristic zero, if you use the technique which I described in this talk, uh, here's what I can prove. If the index is two, then at least there exists a close point of degree 2d with d odd among either. So d odd and d could be 1, 3, 5, 7, or 11. Uh, I don't know whether you can reduce to 2. But uh, I can tell you this, even though we have this flexibility, these kind of computations become quite tedious. And what, this is why I gave up on the, and I restricted the effectivity result to the case where there's a rational point. Okay, putting everything together, uh, I think I'm in time. So analog of this, so we, we discussed depths of degree three, two, and one, okay? Now analog of this, this theorems, both the index uh, one theorem, the index one uh, discussion about index one and the discussion about effectivity have been discussed for uh, conic bundles or projective line, which is the other main class of geometric rational surfaces. And we proved the result, Corey and I proved this in 1979. This has been suggested to us by Sven and I. And we proved it the tedious way by discussing all possible degenerations. So in the case of conic bundles, there's a difference with the case of depth surfaces. In the case of depth surfaces, the best you can do in general, you can look at depth surfaces whose peak R group is, is, is Z. So the only linear system you can think of are just the multiple of the mechanical system. For conic bundles, the Picard group is, is of rank two in general. So you have to, to you have a choice for, for your linear system, but well, you have to pick up the right choice. In any case, we're discussing the possible degenerations in that paper. And I have not investigated whether one could simplify the argument by using the large field trick, which we saw in this talk. So the case, so the other depth of surfaces, or the other rational surfaces when come, that come to mind are depths of degree uh, five to nine. And they are very easy to handle. I mean, the case D equals cis is a bit more difficult, but it's a very, everybody knows how to do that. So uh, I won't discuss it in this talk, but it's, uh, everyone knows how to do these things. So there are, in, the, in all these cases, the, if the index is one, then there's a rational point. Okay? And the effectivity result is uh, quite a sort of trivial because in these cases, um, the, the, the group of zero cycles degree zero is trivial. Okay, for depths of degree four, uh, when asked, the fact that the index is one implies rational point. This is the Amer Corey Brummer theorem. And if X of K is not empty, then in that case, you can blow up the uh, suitable point, and then you get a conic bundle of P1K. So you can apply the result for conic bundle of P1K. Alternately, you can do it directly. This is what Corey also did in 1976, I think. Okay, so using the K by rational classification of geometric rational surfaces, you now get theorems A and B because these theorems A and B only depend on the k bar rational equivalence class. So we have reached uh, the end, except that I have some time. So we have proved, uh, at least I gave you an idea on how to prove these two theorems. Theorem A, which I will repeat slowly, take a smooth projective geometric rational surface. Then there is an integer n of x, which depends only on the geometry of x. So that if i of x is one, then there exists close point of degree uh, less than n of x. So in the case of cubic surfaces, uh, I told you we get um, uh, 10. Uh, now depths of degree um, uh, two, you get seven and, uh, and that's it. And for conic bundles, if you look at relatively minimal conic bundles, uh, you look at the, the at them geometrically, then you see uh, a certain number of singular fibers, which are just uh, intersection of two lines. You count this number of uh, uh, singular uh, special fibers, call it R, and then the N of X in that case is essentially the integral part of R over two. Get down to one. Okay, theorem B, uh, 
take a smooth projective to real rational surface with a k rational point, there is an integer m of x, which depends only on the geometry of x, so that any zero cycle on, on x of degree at least m of x is rationally equivalent to an effective cycle. So again, so for cubic surfaces, we saw 10. And for depths of degree 2, I've already forgotten, but maybe it was something like 14 or 50 or 49. And for um, depths of degree 1, we've got something like uh, 904 or 904, something like that. Okay. And but for a conic bundle of P1, this is the R of the 2, which I just mentioned. OK, so in particular, the struggle of zero cycles, oh gosh, again. is generated by closed points of degree at most m of x. And you see, these are the exact analogs of the results we had for curves of arbitrary genus. Right, so at this point, uh, we note these results are k-birational. So as I repeat, they are proved by a case-by-case -case analysis relying on the k-birational classification of geometric rational surfaces which is due to any request, Manin, Iskowski, and Mori. And so this raises questions. So uh, this, in principle, should be the problem uh, section, but let me start it by going home with problems. Okay, so uh, problems are here. Can one give a proof of serum Z and B avoiding the variational classification? So this is for surfaces. The second question is, do these results extend to higher dimensional geometric rational connected varieties? And so here are the first candidates, uh, smooth cubic hypersurfaces in P4K, conic bundles over P2K, quartic bundles over P1K. Uh, what about geometry C zero trivial varieties? What about any request surfaces? And what about geometry C zero representable varieties already in dimension two? Well, in that case, there's an unpublished result of Zalberger. He proved a, such a theorem for conic bundles over curves of arbitrary genus. And it's a pity that he never published it because the proof is very interesting. It uses uh, vector bundles over the, over the curve uh, with uh, an action of uh, uh, an order uh, over the, the vector bundle, which he ascribes to papers of, to, to results of uh, Witt back in 1938. All right, so uh, let me say that uh, these cases, of course, are extremely tempting. Smooth cubic apples in P4K, conic ball of P2K, quadric ball of P1K. But let me say that, well, the first attempts uh, have not resulted in uh, partial results. So uh, let me see what I wanted to say again. Okay, so I, I think I can, I can stop here and let you ask, give answers to these questions or ask more questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Let's thank Jean-Louis together. Thank you. Uh, questions? Uh, in theorems A and B, um, yes. you, uh, these numbers depend on the geometry of X. Yes. I, I think I understand what that means for surfaces, but what would uh, uh, the geometry of X mean, say, for threefolds? Well, I mean, in the case of, well, in the case of concrete threefold, well, basically it would be something, deta uh, not an integer determined by the canonical class, okay? Because for instance, well, okay, I'm, I'm cheating a bit when I say geometry, let, let me uh, be precise. For instance, in the case of cubic, sur of cubic surfaces, uh, the degree is, uh, you know, K square is the degree. And so, well, anyway, cubic surfaces, we have three, three is the number is there. Uh, this is all that counts. It's just three, okay? And for depth of degree two, it's just two. For depth of degree one, it's just one. And for, and for conic bundles, the geometry uh, was the number, uh, you look at the k-minimal model, and is the number of uh, geometric bad fibers for the k-minimal model. So in higher dimension, 
I guess we should do something similar with, with the possible minimal models at our disposal. But in the particular case I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, for smooth cubic hypersurfaces, I would want an absolute integer. Okay. I, I, I mean, the question would be, uh, you know, is, is it true that uh, on cubic hypersurf in P4, um, if the index is, a, is one, then there's a rational point, there's a close point of degree at most 10, for instance, of, of degree prime to three. And for cunning, for cunning bottles of P2K, the answer would be in terms of the, of the degree of the, of the revision curve of the conic bundle. Okay, the conic bundles of a P2K, it's, it's ramified along some curve in P2K, geometrically, and you look at the degree of that, of that curve. And for quadric bundle of P1K, it's the same. You look, at, you look at the quadric bundle of a P1K bar, and you look at the number of bad fibers. So I, I, I think that's a reasonable answer. Thank you. Uh, more questions? I have a yes, Bjorn. Yeah, okay. I have a comment. The, the argument for large with with the large fields it, it it reminds me a lot of the argument you can do with uh, Lam Nish, Nishimura. So, so I I mean the, I'm not so I you might still need the Bertini, but so no, but Lam Nishimura. I think with Lam Nishimura is it tells you that if you have two two, K, two varieties which are kebar, which smooth projective which are kebar rational, if there's one rational point on one, then there's one rational point in the other. But in our case, we need lots of rational points. Uh, here, here's, what I have in, here's what I have in mind. So if you have, suppose Corey or somebody gives you a construction that for D points, for a general position, if you have a zero, a zero cycle of degree D in oh, general position, Oh, you mean oh, moving the you mean the zero cycle? Well, I mean yeah. You, you the problem is yeah. I agree. No, I see what you know. I, I think I understand what you mean. Um, that is, forget about the large field. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean zero cycles. You can suddenly you can move zero cycles around. Uh, the problem is you can move zero cycles around, but not in an eff not effective zero cycles. You see, if you have a zero cycle. Uh, on a, say, a smooth projective, I have a smooth projective surface. I have a zero cycle of degree D, okay, on this smooth projective surface, and I have a bad curve on my surface. Then I know I can produce a zero cycle of degree D, which is outside of the bad curve. But the zero cycle of degree D will involve close points of high degree, in general. Um, and the point here is that we want to keep. I mean, degree. if you have a, I, I think if you, I mean, if the construction works for a a zero cycle of degree D in general position, then doesn't that already give you a rational map from sim D X to your sim N X? I mean, sim D is for effective, effective D cycles. Yeah, I'm talking about effective. Yeah, I'm talking about effective. Yeah, but I don't know how to move effective D cycles. I know how to move D cycles uh, not effectively. No, I'm not, mo I'm not moving anything. I'm not moving anything. I'm just saying if, if, if you, if you have if you have a construction that works for a, a, an effective zero cycle of degree D in yes. general position, then that construction defines a rational map from sim ah, to okay, so, no, sim n x. Well, I, I I think I yeah I think I know what you mean, and I will have to think whether it works for what we want here. Uh, uh huh. Thank you, Bjorn. Uh, okay, any more questions to Jean-Louis? Okay. We'll come back, we'll come back. Yeah. If no more questions, uh, let's thank Jean-Louis for a beautiful talk again. Uh, thank you very much and uh, I'm closing the session and see you on Thursday. And uh, just a reminder, uh, which was an announcement that uh, next week there will be online case stability conference in Stony Brook. And uh, for young participants, uh, if you want to give a short presentation, please email Nivedita Vishwanathan. Uh, email, her email was in the email we sent. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Thank you, Jean-Louis. Thank you very much. Bye. -bye. Bye.